Uh, may I have your attention? Can, can everyone settle down, please? Okay, good, good morning, everyone. My name is Rohini, and um, I'm here to speak about gender gap. And I've called it... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, I, I've been a long time Wikimedia volunteer, um, and I served as the chairperson of the Gender Gap uh, uh, Special Interest Group in India for a little more than a year until June 2014. Uh, I've called this presentation Gender Gap in the Global South and not Gender Gap in India because um, I gather that uh, some of the issues of access of diversity would be the same or similar in uh, elsewhere in the global south and i uh, believe it would help um, uh, people dealing with the gender gap in in those areas so one of my first stumbling blocks was we had one user group uh, one special interest group of gender gap for the entire country as of now there are 23 uh, Indian language Wikipedias and a, a large country geographically and in terms of cultural diversity. Uh, and there was no data to know the nature of the beast. So there are these four studies uh, which, which target the English language Wikipedia, but there was no knowing what, what is the approximate composition of women in specific language Wikipedias, and back then, I suppose, there were 22 Indian language Wikipedias. So most of this presentation is about uh, what I learned from uh, uh, my volunteering and as, as the chairperson of this uh, gender gap group. Uh, in terms of making a policy, so I had come up with a gender gap work plan and a policy, and in terms of doing outreach, so having conversations with entire communities, with uh, strong figures in the communities, with individuals, uh, going to trainings, uh, and uh, this, is not, this is not research. So uh, the next stumbling block was that there was a refusal to acknowledge uh, the gender gap or its magnitude. So, uh, from from predominantly from men, it it was maybe women don't edit because they are not interested in editing or it's not such a big problem. And uh, this is my conjecture. It may not not be true for everyone that uh, the the refusal to acknowledge the gender gap came in from communities where the where the sex ratio was anyway skewed against women uh, offline outside the Wikipedia context. So it, it was probably because they do not see the gender disparity uh, around them in real life, offline, which is why they do not see gender disparity on Wikipedia. Okay, when it came to women, there was also a refusal to, it's some women, there was also a refusal to acknowledge the gender gap. Uh, even among so-called front runners in the, in the community, um, and this, this first example uh, was, it com comes from very interesting conversations. So uh, there is this trailblazing women, woman who, who I ask, are you aware of the gender gap? And she says, yes. Are you, uh, do you know uh, that some women are harassed uh, on Wikipedia or off it because they are women? And she says, no. And she replies, I've never been harassed. I've been treated with a lot of respect. Um, and that also could be because of her age in, you know, in traditional societies, age is venerated. So it's likely that somebody who, who knows, you know, the, the, her wiki, Wikipedia community who knows her from offline is, uh, uh, less likely to harass her. And I asked her, do you think more women should edit Wikipedia? And she said, yes. Do you, uh, uh, but would you want to help more women in your community edit Wikipedia? And she said, no. And I, from, from, from more conversations like these with women who are, who are already established, 
Uh, and again, this is, this is experiences and conjecture. There is no evidence or research or data to back, back this up. Um, was that maybe in, in trying to, to uh, emphasize, emphasize on issues of gender gap, of violence, of harassment, of, of there, there being less content uh, about women, they, would, they may lose the quote unquote respect in their community, or they may lose the, the uh, leadership position, or it may get diluted. Uh, another experience was uh, that, so it's, it's very well documented that women tend to go uh, quiet uh, for fear of being shouted down or shouted out in, in uh, mixed gender settings, but uh, I've, I've been to trainings where, uh, uh, let's say at the dinner table, the women would freely mingle with everyone in, in, uh, with, with members of all genders, but they would go quiet in the trainings and not contribute to discussions where uh, they're supposed to be in a group. So I don't claim to have any answers, but these are some observations and questions that, that uh, I have from my work. Um, So when there are so few women, <laughs> you try and you try and enlist as many allies, as many as many men, because you you really don't have an option. It's an abysmally low number of women. So and there tend to be men who would not forthright verbally abuse uh, a woman, but who are also less likely to acknowledge the more insidious, the more under the surface kind of sexism that contributes to the gender gap. And uh, it's for more than a year I've been trying to put together a gender sensitization workshop for admins in India, but I don't want to call it that because it'll put these guys on the back foot. Um, So when, when uh, the, the more under the surface uh, sexism is not, uh, not acknowledged, is, is invisibilized, uh, having safe spaces, having women only spaces loses its, uh, loses its meaning, its gravity because they're they are seen as spaces for girl gangs or it's, it's a, a safe space is just a privilege. It's, it's, you have a, a special corner for yourself and you may not have earned that privilege because you're getting it because of your gender. So, so it is not seen as an attempt, any kind of including uh, inclusion and diversity is not seen as an attempt to um, offset uh, inequality or to provide justice, but, but it is seen as giving privileges. And this brings me back to the woman frontrunner I was talking about who was actually in the position to help get more women in her community because there would be many, both men and women who would follow her and start editing. Is that just because there are such, so, so few women, there are, there are fewer role models. And role models need to come in, in all, all varieties. It cannot be one superheroine uh, or somebody from the other side of the country or other part of the world. It, it, they have to be role models that um, women editors and especially newbies can identify with. There was no code of conduct so far for any event, any meeting, um, any conference happening in India. That has changed uh, because I'm, I'm part of a volunteer team now which has drafted a code of conduct for the forthcoming Wiki conference in India. It is not up for community review yet, but it, it is present on, on this uh, uh, link and uh, we would encourage people to translate the code of conduct and, and adapt it to their communities uh, for, for their own, uh, own events and meetups and conferences. So. Uh, there are some language communities in India that do their own annual uh, conference for native speakers, um, for Wikipedians who are native speakers of that language. And last of all, uh, 
there are many uh, the in 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 uh, the the number of native speakers in these 23 odd uh, languages is large, but the communities, uh, Wikipedia and communities and active editors are uh, small in number. So. Uh, in, in small communities, everyone tends to know everyone else. It, they may not have met in person, or they may only know them by their handles, but it's very often very easy to join the dots, you know, 30 odd active editors, 40, 100 editors. It's very easy for, for people to know everyone else. There are many editors who, who interact on um, uh, online private channels, on Facebook, for example. So, in, in uh, these kind of uh, uh, milieus, it becomes difficult for somebody to speak up about harassment because it's not an anonymous person you're, you're talking about, but somebody you know, or, or it, it could affect the politics in, in your community. And it also uh, brings about a fear, it could be an unfounded fear, of uh, being targeted because their real life identities are known. And with that, I would like to open the floor for questions. Can someone pass the microphone to the front, please? Thank you very much for, uh, for your intervention. I am uh, Montserrat Bosch uh, from Spain, Wiki Mujeres, Wiki Woman. <laughs> Um, but I, I, I cannot speak very well English, and, and uh, I ask uh, my question in, uh, in Spanish, and uh, Maria uh, translate my question. Um, eh, hablo un poco de español. Fantástico, <laughs> genial. <laughs> <laughs> Wikimedia Interlangas, fantastic. Um, has uh, explicado cuestiones eh, muy específicas sobre por qué se produce la brecha de género. Pero creo que te falta un concepto clave, que es la violencia estructural. Es decir, el patriarcado y la violencia estructural que hace que las mujeres tengan que establecer estrategias de esconderse para no ser víctimas de una mayor violencia. Entonces, eh, animo a que cuando hagamos presentaciones sobre Gender Gap, las hagamos recordando lo básico. Tenemos una, un patriarcado, una violencia estructural que, en la que la comunidad Wikimedia eh, no, no está alejada y, por tanto, eh, tenemos que luchar por la base. Yeah, that was a short question. Okay. <laughs> so she's saying that uh, in your presentation, um, you focused in very specific questions about how harassment happens in in small communities. Um, she says that she feels that what is missing is uh, something a bit higher, like uh, the, the structural violence or harassment that happens and that makes uh, uh, women uh, develop strategies like uh, hiding. And uh, she encouraged everyone to um, focus on, that, uh, on the structural issues that uh, facilitate this kind of harassment in, when we make presentations. Yes. Um, and she highlights the importance of focusing in the structural kinds of harassment and violence and the patriarchy. Yes, so, so I agree that harassment uh, pushes women underground 
and silences them. And that is another reason why it's so difficult to get numbers on how many women are active because uh, they want to stay in the shadows. They don't want to declare on their wiki page that they are women. Uh, they don't want their handle to disclose their gender. So I, I agree, and it's only recently that I found out uh, that uh, the WMF has a support and safety team where you can report the more serious uh, instances of uh, threats of harm. So. Hi. <clears throat> um, um, um. From Germany, <laughs> from the German Wikipedia mostly, um, you had as a source charting diversity, which was um, a research project on the gender gap between the Wikimedia Foundation Germany and um, the Boyd University of Applied Science. And one graph that I found there, and I read it too, is that India has a proportionally very low um, participation of female editors it was written as 3%. And what I wanted to know from you is whether you see that the same way, that it's um, in comparison to other language versions lower or um, harder for women in India to edit. And then also to other questions, um, he talked about safe spaces being an unearned privilege. And um, I think that it's important, even if that's seen that way, if um, projects that promote women are seen as an honor and privilege, you should still continue those projects and still keep them up running. Because the gender gap is a fact, and it was shown by so many different studies, and that means that it's really necessary to have that promotion, and that you shouldn't get desiderated by that criticism in general um, among all different language versions. Yeah. Um, and then I think it's also important to mention um, about the harassment that in all, everywhere in real life and also within the community, I think there are a lot of men that don't harass female editors and also most men in real life don't harass women. It's only a very small percentage. That's um, why I always think that it would be so important to get um, other men to not accept it and not tolerate it and um, like um, build a kind of code of conduct where you um, don't tolerate it as a community and that that would be a very important thing. So it would be three different points <laughs> that I now elaborated on and I um, would like to know your opinion on it and your answers. Yeah. So, coming to your first question, I agree that that uh, the number of active women editing Wikipedia in India would be lower than uh, in, let's say, the West or, you know, especially the English language Wikipedia. Uh, my concern was, we know that the number is abysmally low. Uh, was was to know which communities need to be targeted first because. Like I said, that time there were 22 Indian language Wikipedias, now there are 23, um, and some more are in incubation. So uh, which of them have the worst gender ratios? And uh, uh, I believe that some communities are doing far better in terms of the gender gap than, uh, than others, and these communities are also where literacy is higher or the sex ratio uh, for the number of uh, women per thousand men is higher. But there is no way to quantify it because there's just no data, and you don't really know if I... So um, I'm no longer the chairperson of the gender gap group in India, and uh, there has been no one after me. Uh, so in a way, everything that I started has you know, halted where it was or possibly even collapsed. But um, if you cannot target all 22 languages, so if you were to zero in on three or five, which five should you go for? Uh, and uh, uh, it's, it's not necessary that the gender gap is the, is the highest or lowest in the Eng Indian language Wikipedias because far more people uh, edit 
the uh, um, Indian language Wikipedias than the English Wikipedia in India. I did not uh, quite understand uh, your second question. Uh, could you? Is it turned on now? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, one point in your presentation, in one slide, it was written that um, if there are safe spaces that are created for women or women only projects, um, because in mixed gender groups, I also saw that all the time happening, not only in Wikipedia, but also in other contexts, usually women are afraid to take on leadership roles and they get silent. So um, if you have these women-only spaces, it's much easier for them to take on leadership roles and to be more active and more confident. And that um, when these spaces are created, usually you get a lot of opposition. People say that it's unearned privilege, that those things are discriminative against other genders, and that... Um, those spaces shouldn't be created, that it's an unfair thing that that is funded. And I think even if you get that criticism, you should still continue them. I think that's an important thing to say. Yeah, so safe spaces can be both online and offline. And uh, it's not just the, the, the barriers to safe spaces are not just that they are seen as unearned privileges. It can work the other way around too. Uh, from well-meaning well men saying, so if there's a woman-only space, and they will say, well, we are good men, let us come and administrate this space. And that is all, that has happened in my experience for, for online spaces as well. Uh, so you can do a women-only workshop and you will find half a dozen men saying, can you let us in? Because we also want to learn to edit Wikipedia. And so um, it's, it's important to have safe spaces, but they are, it, they are, my point was that they're so difficult to enforce, so difficult to put a limit saying that, you know, this is, uh, and, and it's, it's important to have women-only spaces because there, there have been documented instances of research and um, f with, in other outreach efforts that uh, uh, women generally open up more and are less uh, inhibited in these kind of spaces in the Wikipedia context. Um, uh, can I take your third question later because I can see quite a few hands up. Yeah. I'm Natasha and I run a gender gap workshop uh, with, with uh, La Merveille here in Geneva. And we met um, someone from uh, Mexico uh, in, in uh, November who also ran a workshop and we discussed a lot about this safe space need for women. And we came up to mixed conclusion not coming from the research, but coming from a very practical uh, side. Well, we found out that in Geneva, we have mixed workshop, but the theme of, the, of writing over Swiss uh, biography of women apparently interested more women, but the men who came were interested in that aspect, and this was enough for the good man uh, uh, etiquette. And it was very useful for women to see that they were not afraid to make mistakes. And then we addressed this in, in the workshop, saying, look at the difference between your own behaviors. And then it got them speaking about it. But in Mexico, um, uh, the, the, the woman in charge of the workshop told us, for us, it's not possible to have um, a mixed space because we've had uh, sexual harassment and women being attacked. So I think it very much depends on the local uh, perception of equality, and th this is where we have to be careful. And what happens also in Europe and the United States is that if you create a, 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 a safe space for women, then you get, uh, you get transgender groups saying that it's discriminatory. So, so you need to have a discussion each time and I know that in our workshop, we had to kick one man out because of uh, harassment. We told him, okay, this is not on, you cannot stay. 
So you, it, I think it really depends. You cannot go and say, this is how you should do it. It needs to be a discussion with the community. I, I completely agree. Every community has its own dynamics and its own needs and its own composition and uh, what, what would constitute a safe space for one community. A safe space could be porous for certain communities, like the first example you gave, like it's okay for, to have a mixed gender um, uh, attendance in, in a safe space and it, it may not be the case for other communities. So it's, it's very important to have discussions around these. My own experience was that nobody was even talking about it or nobody was acknowledging these, uh, these issues. This is the, the last, uh, last question. Hello, I'm Camellia from uh, Wikipedia in Italian. Uh, we are to start a project about uh, professional women and uh, sponsored by the U European Commission. And uh, I want to know it's, um, it can, if it, it can be done because uh, I saw a lot of categories in uh, Wikipedia in English about women in STEM, women in science, uh, but Italian have not uh, this, uh, this category. Uh, they even deleted uh, the category of about women in uh, the uh, 21st century because uh, uh, in uh, Italian, uh, Wikipedians is not a problem. Women uh, are present on the are present on the category generally category. Uh, they even uh, don't don't need to have a category about women. Do you think that uh, wiki professional uh, uh, women can? It's a doable uh, project. It can be done. It's. Uh, it so. Professional women, in the sense, women who are working in in some profession or the other. I, you know, personally, I think that's a very generalized category, which is why, which is possibly why somebody deleted it. Uh, but it would help to have more granular categories, like you said, women in STEM. But that's just my own opinion. That you know, it, it's it's practically like having a category that says working women, and it's sort of also emphasizes that some women don't work or some are stay-at-home women or wives and mothers. So I would personally not create such a category. The time is over. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>